Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing series. In the last episode, we went ahead and brought up the segment routing in the topology that we have brought up on the Cisco wall as the solution. So in the last episode, we got the segment routing running within our topology end to end. And you saw the different type of labels, uh, the different labels being utilized for all the different nodes. So now, once we have the segment routing working, now we're going to go ahead and explore one of the very important or cool concept in the segment routing, which is called segment routing traffic engineering. That is the real power. Uh, that's why a lot of people or service provider on the industry is really moving towards the segment routing, which is the traffic engineering part. And a lot of people knew that is with the traffic engineering or TE. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and introduce the segment routing traffic engineering as a technology. We'll also see how the SRT provide a simple automated and a scalable architecture for us to engineer traffic flows within a network. So if you are working with any kind of network, let's say you are working with an IGP running OS or OSPF or ISIS, and you would say, okay, I have a node A and node B, I need to send some traffic. Now there you can say, okay, hey, take the shortest path, or take the path where we have the uh, lowest latency or probably some of the other things. But there are a few more things that we can go ahead and do with the help of SR where we can go ahead and start programming our own flow and we can dictate, okay, if I have this kind of traffic, I would like to really use these certain nodes or these certain links. An example would be, let's say you have a high paying customer where they have subscribed for a video as a service. Now, in that case, you want to make sure when there is a video call, you would like to have that being routed over one of your high bandwidth links, as well as the low latency links. On the other hand, you might have some customers, free customers. You don't want them to be using those certain links. So we can go ahead and start engineering or start architecting those flows for our network. And that is all with the help of segment routing. And segment routing makes this kind of configuration really easy. And this kind of configuration, we're talking about the traffic engineering. Later on, we will also go ahead and talk about the iOS XR based SR path computation element. And we'll see how that really fits into the overall equation for the segment routing. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the segment routing traffic engineering. Again, I'm referencing the material on segment routing segment-routing.net. Thanks to these guys, all the credit goes to them for putting such a lovely material out there for public to consume. And we are using the same material again, you know, I will be not going like point by point as we have went through in the, some of the past episode. These PDFs are available there. You can go ahead and simply download and read them about, you know, every single line. So we'll go ahead and look at some of the important concepts around here. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So with the topic, segment routing traffic engineering. So let's go ahead and scroll some of the slides. We really don't need them. And so far we know, okay, hey, we have different routers. We can uh, pick a sRGB block. We can have a prefix it based on either absolute value or an index value. And then we have something called as a global. Then we have an adjacency SID, which are local significant to the router. Now, if you take a look here, there is something pretty uh, good that we can talk about quickly here. Now, every link between the two nodes, there's something called link metric. So we have an IGP, as well as a, there is a TE metric. So TE is your traffic routing engineering metric, basically. And the default value for both IGP and TE is 10. IGP metric is denoted by letter I, followed by the value. So in this case, it says I10. And the TE metric is denoted by T colon, uh, whatever is the value. In that case, is 10 also. So you can see in this example, it says, okay, hey, I have a 20 here. The I stands for again IGP. So in this case, the IGP metric is 20 and the T metric is 100. And we will see how we can go ahead and configure these T metrics or how do we see what is the current T metric configured on a link. But as you can just see, by default, both IGP and T metric, the value is 10. So now let's go ahead and proceed further. So now let's really talk about what is SRT. SRT stands for Segment Routing Traffic Engineering. So what it says, it's a simple, automated, and scalable. So there is no core state. So that means state in the packet header. We don't keep any state. No tunnel interface. 
So if you work with the MPLS, we will go ahead and create a tunnel. There is no such concept of creating a tunnel here. Similarly, when you were working with the MPLS, we had the RSVP where we need to go ahead and keep a state, which is not the case with SRTE here. As well as no head and prior configuration. We don't have to do any prior configuration onto our head and node. We can use something called on demand policy instantiation. No head and prior steering. We can have an automated steering. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these things as we progress further. Again, MPLS and SRV6, uh, we had kind of uh, briefly talked about that. So to really work with the traffic engineering, we are really talking about the segment routing traffic engineering. So to do any kind of traffic engineering, there is a concept which is called policy. So we need to go ahead and start creating SR policies, which are your segment routing policy. So now let's go ahead and think about what is a policy. So as the name says, SR policy. An SR policy is uniquely identified by a tuple. So tuple, in the tuple, there is something called, we have an headed, there is something called a color, and there is something called endpoint. So these three things that makes a tuple, and with this help of this tuple, we kind of uniquely identify an SR policy. So now let's go ahead and look at what are these headed. So headed says where the SR policy is instantiated or implemented, and color. It's just simply a numerical value to differentiate multiple SRT policy between the same pair of nodes. So now let's go ahead and quickly take a look at what is endpoint and then I'll explain this with the help of the diagram. Endpoint, the destination of the SR policy. So in this case, we have a couple set of router. So if you take a look at, we have a router one. And from the router one, we are interested in reaching to router four. So that means router one and router four are the pair of the router where we are planning to implement an SR policy. In that case, router 1 is the one who is interested in reaching router 4. That means our destination in this case is router 4. So the destination is called as your endpoint. So router 4 is the endpoint in this particular case. Now router 1 is the one which is interested in reaching router 4. That means the policy that we want needs to be implemented or needs to be instantiated on router 1. So that's why the router 1 is called as your head end. Now, the policy that we are creating between this router 1 and router 4, we are want to uniquely identify that policy. So we are giving that policy a number and that number is called color. So in this case, we are saying, okay, hey, we are assigning a color green and the color green means a numerical value. So now let's say the numerical value we tend to pick is 10. So next time when you are want to create another policy between router 1 and router 4, you cannot have the same color because it's a tuple and it needs to be uniquely identified. So your head end will be one, your endpoint will be four, but your color needs to be different. So you could pick any other color other than 10. It can be 11, 12, 13, 14, any number that you want to go ahead and pick it up. And that is the main thing. What it says, a color is a numerical value to differentiate multiple SRT policy. That means when you have multiple policy between a pair, that means you have the same head end and you have the same endpoint. In that case, you want to have a different value for your color. That's what it says. At a given head end, an SR policy is uniquely identified by a tuple. Again, there is a color and there is an endpoint. And when we do some hands-on, we will go ahead and take a look at it. But these are the three things that really makes up your policy. Head end, color, and endpoint. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the few examples. So each SR policy has a color. As we saw in the previous example, color can be used to indicate a certain treatment. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those treatments later on. Only one SR policy with a given color can exist between a given node. That's what we just learned. That means I cannot go ahead and reuse the same color value between same pair of nodes. In other words, each SR policy triplet at CE. Again, H stands for head end, C stands for color, and E stands for endpoint is unique. It needs to be unique. So in this example, what it says, okay, hey, we have a low, low cost. We are saying, okay, hey, the top path, we are indicating that by a color green and the color green could have any value again like 10. And we are denoting the bottom path with the color blue and the blue in this case could have a value of let's say 20. So that means between a given pair of node, the color needs to be unique. We cannot have duplicate system or the platform even won't let you go ahead and do that. So in a SR policy, we saw there were a couple of things. We are saying, okay, hey, between one and four. So this is the policy that we are creating. 
So that policy, now if you pay attention here, it says, okay, this policy is traversing from router 1 to router 2, router 3 to router 4, or it can traverse from 1 to 7 to 6 to 5 to 4. So it can take either of these paths depending on certain condition, and then we'll learn how do we go ahead and configure those certain conditions. But the system can either pick this top path or the bottom path. So keep that in mind and let's go ahead and proceed further. An SR policy. In the SR policy, another thing that we have is something called as your candidate paths. An SR policy consists of one or more candidate paths, which are also called as your simply C path. So an SR policy can have multiple paths. So as we saw in this case, hey, when I'm creating a policy, I can say pick this path or pick this path. So these paths are nothing but are called as your candidate paths. And again, these candidate paths could have different properties. Again, we will learn how do we configure those properties. But these paths are simply called as your candidate path. So within an SR policy, we can have or an SR policy can consist of one or more candidate path. That is your choice depending on the conditions. But an SR policy instantiate one single path in rib and fib. The selected path, which is the preferred validate candidate path. Again, the rib and fib will always install only the one of the best path. Okay. Now, the path that we are assigning to a policy, the path is either dynamic or explicit. That means we can give a fixed path, which is called as an explicit path, or we can go ahead and say, hey, you go ahead and calculate or go ahead and find the path based on some dynamic properties. And we'll go ahead and learn what are those different properties. So now, within a candidate path, a candidate path is a single segment list where we are giving a single segment list, which is also called your SID list or a set of weighted set list. We can go ahead and assign some weight also. Typically an SR policy path only contains a single set list. We typically have one set list. Traffic steered into an SR policy path is load shared over all set list of the path. So in this example, we say, okay, we have an SR policy, which has a couple of different candidate path. Now each within each path, you can have a set list. And with that set list, you can associate a weight. And we can have multiple of those set lists also. 